Hi, you are watching On the Town with Tanya. Welcome back. Uh, thank you for watching with us another uh, another week. We appreciate you. I'm your host, Tanya Cooper. Uh, this week, our guest is from New Rochelle. Uh, he's a New Rochelle native that has recorded an album, worked in human resources field for over 12 years. He is an addiction specialist, trained in family development and counseling, and is currently pursuing a degree in social work. He's a man of many talents, and calling and callings, but his most important being an elder in his church and pursuing his call as a preacher of the gospel. Please welcome Richard Adams Adamson the second. Welcome. Hi. Hey, How are you? How are you? How are How you? you? Good, good. An honor to be here uh, reconnecting with you again. Yes, it's been a while. You are. You uh, you and I have met. Uh, how long ago? We were trying to decide. Uh, it's oh been man, it has to be at least fifteen years. Wow, that's when you had put uh, out uh, an uh, album. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's well, the album that we did put out where you did the interview. I think that was it was back then. Yes, it's been that long. So we'll we'll talk a little. We'll go into a little bit of that in a minute. Yeah, I'm sorry. Uh, but so you are a man of many talents and gifts. Uh, but but God's always first. I see. So that's a good thing. Um. So that's not new to you, um, you know, being a man of God. In fact, didn't you grow up in the church, right? Let's go back to the beginning. You grew up in the church, correct? Yeah, yeah. I grew up in church and, um, you know, the teachings of the Bible and moral moral understanding um, was always something that was taught to me as a, as a child. Um, it's just that when um, I became of age, I had, I had to make the decision for myself what I believed. And that's what my family, my family kind of always instilled that in me, that you have to make the decision for yourself, what you believe. You can't do something because your mo your mama did it or your father did it. Absolutely. Well, what, what was it like growing up being the son of a preacher? Um, it was it was really, really hard because sometimes like when you're a part of a, um, a particular social group, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, you, get, you get linked into categories um that you know and you you kind of get robbed of your individuality a little bit and i think that's what happened to me there's always that stigma of preaching children mm -hmm. yeah uh, i was a preacher's I, kid hmm? i was a preacher's kid i don't know if i oh, okay. I, I didn't know that my wow. father was a minister so seven wow. years old i was in the church probably like three or four days a week i mean mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> okay, cool. Bible study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, the usher board, right? Mm -hmm. Like, uh, yeah. Yeah, Sunday, but yeah, it was. Yeah, I mean, it, it it was it was tough though because um, people a, a lot of times, with the exception of people in my immediate inner circle, a lot of people don't take the chance to get to know you. They just, they put you in a category. Like I've had people say to me, oh yeah, you're a Buddhist child. I, I know, I know how they are. And um, I kind of had to fight for my individuality. Right. Which was painful because nobody wants to fight to be an individual. No, no, it's already hard anyway, but that's, uh, I never thought about it that way that you're fighting for your individuality. Cause I'm trying to think, I mean, I guess a lot of people, well, cause I was a foster kid. It was kind of a blessing. Mm -hmm guys because maybe that's why the only the church people knew that i'm a pre-k's kid you mm -hmm. know uh but so the standards are high and expectations are high um but um i didn't i mean i didn't mind i don't know why it didn't didn't bother me as much as i'm sure it, it, well it did when it came to dating that that was lack of <laughs> that wasn't happening yeah, yeah, i mean <laughs> that's your date <laughs> yeah i mean i mean some aspects of it didn't bother me because i i, I enjoyed the structure that I had, um, I guess it just bothered me um, because it came with a lot of demands. And when you're born into something like that, mm -hmm. like when you're born into a or, or any of any or faith of any type, mm -hmm. um, you're not born into it being that. You're born into it as what your as the culture of your family or what the people in your family practice. But you have actually not come to terms with what you are. Yes, because you're still developing. Yeah, and so people put the demands on you before you even know who you want to be. Absolutely. And that, I guess that's what was painful for me. It's sometimes people can maybe use your own faith or your own religion or family religion to kind of put you in a religious box. Yes. While they live how they feel like living. Yes. You know what I mean? So. Yeah. 
I, I totally get what you're saying. And I, I know even when um, somebody like Kurt Franklin came out with, um, with his um, version of gospel, people were like, oh my God, sacrilege. And I was like, no, it's not. I think God would be quite pleased that he's bringing these young people in left and right. You know what I'm saying? So sometimes we have to um, step out of what everybody else expects of us and do what God tells us to do. Because if you do what he tells you to do, it's always going to be right. You oh, know, yeah. Be I mean, true. Yeah, there's always, I'm sorry, there's always a decency in order how you have to do things. Yeah. Um, any of us could put something together and say, oh, this is God. But my thing is, um, if you're following God, the easiest way is to follow God. You'll know what to do. Mm, that's exactly what, so what, what exactly led you to ministry between the time that I talked to you making the album and, and now? Um, <laughs> that's a good question. <laughs> yeah, I know the, I know the I, answer. I to say that music is, uh, in my opinion, music is a form of ministry. So usually, I, I know I heard your um, your CD years ago, and uh, it was powerful, and it had a message to it. So I I believe that music is a for another form of ministry. I mean, some people must choose to use it that way, but you you know what I'm saying. Uh, so um, I mean, I mean, um, what led me there was a lot of things. I mean, I, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna lie to you. Mm -hmm. When I was a child, I knew there was something different about me. Mm -hmm. uh, I didn't always embrace that difference right okay. away. It, it Sometimes it made me uncomfortable because when you're a child, mm -hmm. you do want to fit in with everybody else because, you know, that's a part of the group you are. But um, what led me there was God's call. Mm -hmm. I it's, There were so many times in my life where I had experiences where I heard him calling me. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't always answer right away. Mm -hmm. But I knew I had this burning urge to deliver a message. Mm. And a lot of people that remember me from school and from when I was a kid, mm -hmm. I was always joking. Was to to that was a form of ministry. Mm -hmm. Like yeah. something in me just let people move yeah. But then it was a serious part of me that was going to have a message. Mm -hmm. And that's how I kind of got uh, caught up in the right room. Because, of, because contrary to popular belief, people probably believe I wanted to be famous. Right or popular, but I got into rap because I had this message I had to get out of me. Right. So what led me into ministry, especially after me and you, God came to me and was like, "I do have a message I, I need you to speak, but you're not going to do it here." Mm. And, he, and he kind of sent my wife as a catalyst, um, help me in, in or, or as a a component to help me get there. Mm, we'll talk about that too. That's mm -hmm. amazing. So, so your wife led you to this. What What is it like uh, in two two thousand? I was going to say two thousand twenty. Two thousand. It is two thousand twenty. I have to remember what year it is. Oh, uh, what is it like being a Christian preacher, um, preacher in today's time with all the challenges that we face, and you know the young people, um, people set in their ways. What is that? What kind of chat? What is that like? Well, it's very scary. I mean, you did. We're no longer living in a time where it, where bring, being a preacher brings you prestige mm -hmm. and favor. We're living in a time where people hate preachers. They, they hate uh, Christianity mm -hmm. um, for a lot of reasons mm -hmm. because people use religion to their advantage. You know, the Bible speaks of false prophets, false teachers all the time. Yeah. So when you're that, like I've had to go into jails and preach mm -hmm. and preach in the street. That's actually where the ministry started for me in the street. Mm -hmm. And in the street, it's not like in the church. No, definitely not. Where, like, if they don't like you, they're not held to a standard to be nice. Mm -hmm. So I'm I'm going to say that, honestly, it's a scary time to be a minister of the gospel now. Now, if God calls you, he can sustain you mm -hmm. to fulfill um, the calling. But it's a scary time. Wow. Because people are... Are so willing to express hatred now. And so, you know, there's a possibility that I could be hurt. There's a possibility that, you know, there's violence against religious people. Yes, there. Uh, I get what you. Well, you know, back in the way back in the day, um, when ministers got it rough because uh, they they were able to gather people and they didn't like that. Back in the way back, go back to the 1800s, it was a bad thing. So, right. so uh, we're living in a time where they don't want any more Martin Luther Kings or anything like that. Yeah. Well, you know what? I always say, and they say it's not over to the fat lady sings. I always say it's not over to God sings. There you go. That's my my famous saying. He, he made the fat lady. <laughs> exactly. There you go. He made her. So he's right. He's right. And that's it. Um, mm -hmm. 
so so being um it's so so it's been challenging as a man of the cloth uh, now, are you still in the music career? That's what I meant to as a music business. I meant to ask you in that in, a, or in that realm. And if you are, is it challenging as a man of the club to manage your career, uh, or even just human services and entertainment and ministry, or just human services? Because I think mm-hmm. you answered it sort of, but but it is still um, it is still a, a separate question technically because mm-hmm. you know there's. Challenging meaning, um, like you said, scary time. Uh, scary time, yes. But like, there's other challenges that come up, and I'm just wondering uh, yeah. what, what those could be. So, or, or, or you know, being in one one thing and two top opposite things. Even though when you're talking human service, that's a giving. That's a giving field. So that that makes sense. Mm-hmm. Um, but I'm sure, you know, there's times where there's challenges, um, and it gets exhausting. Um, being drank, you know, I, I find ministry when you're giving so much, uh, uh, what God tells you to do and doing so much work, it can mm-hmm. be exhausting at times, you know, uh, so you have to know how to go re up and repray up as they say. Yeah. I mean, oftentimes people see people have high expectations of you and people see you in your role, but my wife sees me and my family sees me when I'm straight up human, if mm-hmm. you know what I mean. Right. Um, but as far as being in the music business still, I'm not in the music business um, at the capacity I was. Like I'm not rapping anymore. Doing any of that. Right. Um, I am still writing music. Um, I just came together with a, um, a communication professor who is also a um, a, uh, a writer, a um, mm-hmm. uh, player, and a singer named uh, Fat Spina. Okay. He's the she's the um, music artist who sings Chase and Shadow. Mm. And um, her and I, you know, have been talking about the love of God, and mm-hmm. she's given me her testimony. I've been a guest on her podcast. Mm-hmm. So um, recently, I wrote some songs for her and for us to come together and just kind of express uh, to the world God's love. Right. So, so I'm still writing and creating, but right. I'm just not in it. Um, um, I'm I'm just not in it at the at the capacity I was before. Um, I, I, I was always in music, even when I was in the church. I'm a percussionist. I play drums, mm-hmm. um, congas, bongos, stuff like that. African drums, djembe. I, I, um, I love the, um, the, the music, uh, the art of expressing through music. Yes, and and that's what I'm gonna say. Well, I'll, that that will be one of my ending uh, questions, but uh, but I'm gonna get back to that about um, music and art um, and ministry because you know sometimes people think like you can only have one or the other. I tend to think that you can have all of the above, and I don't think God gives us more talent than He wanted us to express. Mm-hmm. It may not be the way we wanted to, so maybe I do secular music may not be the way, but and perhaps it's gospel. Perhaps you went through all that to get to the gospel. Yeah, you know what I mean? So the group or whatever. So mm-hmm. I think I think it's all relevant. Um uh one I, I know you had mentioned once uh about anxiety. Uh since mm-hmm. COVID, a lot of us, a lot of people, including myself, has developed uh some kind of anxiety. I don't know where it came from. I'm not using anxiety type, but mm-hmm. uh, but it's happened now. Uh and that's because you know, between the George Floyd and the the darn uh COVID and and you know, Brandon Taylor's and the co- protest, I mean, just so much stuff. That's where lines came from. But you mentioned um, your struggle with anxiety. Can you can you share a little piece of that? Yeah, um, my struggle with anxiety actually started way before we even knew what COVID was. Um, mm-hmm. I really don't know what brought it on, but in 2016 is when I had my first bout with it, and um, it came. It kind of came feeling like a heart attack. Mm. And I was kind of like, I was at work when it happened. I was working in a jail mm-hmm. and um, I didn't know what brought it on because I wasn't stressed. Mm-hmm. Um, the jail environment I'm used to, cause I had been there for so many years working as a mm-hmm. counselor. Um, and you know, I didn't drink or smoke cigarettes or things of that nature, things that would affect your heart. Mm-hmm. So when I started to get the tightness in my chest and feel dizzy, I was like, confused. I said, well, I don't understand why I'm having a heart attack if that's what it is. So I ended up in the hospital. They said nothing was wrong with me. And then the same thing happened like two days, two or three days later. And then 
that's when they really ran tests on me and then sent me to a therapist. And then that's when they said, this is anxiety. And then they, they started giving me medicine, which I didn't want to continue to take. So I kind of weaned my way off it with the help of the doctors and everything. Nice. Because, it, you know, the medicine can make you feel sick too. Now I use natural stuff, but yeah. under, under professional guidance though, I didn't just say right. I'm not taking the medicine anymore, but right. yeah. Um, but They're the biggest cool. struggle is, is that, in the ever, you know, I was born in the '70s, so in right. in from what I know in the African American community, mm-hmm. we didn't really know much about anxiety. It's just mm-hmm. life was rough. So when people found out I had it, they people would be like, "Well, ain't you a preacher?" Right, exactly. Um, Very strong, much, yeah. strong, strong black man. Why are you, you know, why are you struggling with anxiety? But but again, that's people like I told you that that was always kind of something I went through with being a the son of a preacher. Um, right. People always kind of feel like. I guess they have more insight on your life than you do. Right. Objective than you are with your own life, which I get people on the outside can have a different view, but I guess they forget that nobody can have the view you have because you're you. Right. So, exactly. Yeah. So I had a hard time explaining my anxiety to people. And yeah. yeah I, I can imagine, um, you know, when anytime you're in any kind of position, um, you know, and especially when you're like a man of God, a uh, woman of God, um, that that just um, people have these stereotypes that everything's perfect. And, you know, mm-hmm. I don't know. I don't understand it either. But here's the thing. Um, it's a great um, lesson to learn that none of us are above and beyond. And by the grace of God, there you go. I mm-hmm. you know? that's that's really that's really I, I tell people don't I even my kids I tell them don't expect like I'm not perfect. <laughs> like I do things that I'm sure I'm not supposed to be doing or right. that. I could have did better. Um, Mm -hmm. But the the difference is I am aware and I try to correct myself. um, And it's something like anxiety is something you just can't even help. Like nobody can help that. And I, and I can attest that I never had anxiety before and I should have being a foster child. I probably should have, but I never had anxiety like that before. um, And it came out of nowhere. My brother died. um, Mm -hmm. And I actually was on a highway once had to pull over. Cause every time I saw 18 wheel, I just, Freaked out, literally freaked out, could not move. And my daughter's like, what's wrong with you? So I had to pull over for two hours. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Two hours. Like I was, and I have no idea to this day. I can't tell you why, except for I just, at some time I would just start thinking about him and whatever, and just in, in total fear. Um, but mm-hmm. I'm glad I went through it because guess what? Yeah. Now, um, now I can tell people about it and, um, yeah. and, uh, and, you know, and help them say, Look, yeah. even her, you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm no one's perfect. There's no one on this earth yeah. that is perfect or d- does not go through something. Um, and if you haven't, then good luck. I mean, please come and please come on this show. I'd like to interview you. <laughs> if you never yeah. do anything in your in your life so perfect, please. I would you I will yeah. I will I will get you on Oprah. How about that? You know? <laughs> no, but like, that, oh. that is me when you say that when you talk about your brother dying, because that could be I've explored that because I've had like uh, quite a few family members murdered in the street by gang uh-huh. members. And uh-huh. oftentimes people, they look at you growing up in the church, yeah. um, but they don't realize everybody in your family is not on that path. And so I had a few family members that were my age that were killed by um, gang bangers mm. and people like, and, and the other stereotype is where I grew up. Like people are shocked at, that I grew up in New Rochelle and went through that. Mm-hmm. They don't understand that violence is not just in the boroughs. Like there was always tension between Mount Vernon and the Rochelle and right. Yonkers. And, and, you know, one time, I guess guys from the Rochelle killed somebody in one of those towns and they came back. My mm-hmm. family happened to be standing outside and got hit and died. Mm-hmm. And that was horrible be- for me because I've never robbed anybody. I've never shot anybody. And, and in fact, the album that you heard, mm-hmm. I was working for some guys with in, in, from Mount Vernon to kind of bring unity Mm. Um, back to our neighborhoods because, uh, you know, I was affected by it. And a lot of people, I just, it just bothered me how people was just like, oh, well, that happens every day. You know, mm-hmm. I was telling my mentor, you know, um, and, you know, I had a mentor in, in uh, substance abuse counseling. Oh, okay. his, his name was Jesse Martin. Okay. Uh, he's from Yonkers, as a matter of fact. And he, he taught me to craft mm-hmm. on a very rough level. And mm-hmm. so I expressed these things to him mm-hmm. and, um, you know, I guess even even he understood because he, you know, he's from Yonkers, he's from Westchester County, mm-hmm. and he sees what goes on a lot of times that doesn't make it on the news. So when you spoke about your brother dying and 
having anxiety, there were times where I would relive the moment where my family got the phone call. You know, like when one of my cousins got shot to death, mm -hmm. that phone call changed our life forever, especially mine, because it was, you know, the females in my family were affected. Mm -hmm. but when other, when you're a black man and other black men your age are dying mm. like that, yes. kind of makes you wonder how long you have. So exactly, when people look at me as being a Christian, mm -hmm. a lot of times being a preacher's child is hard because they think I just got into it um, because of my dad. But yeah. I had my own pain. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I thank God for, mm -hmm. this may sound crazy, is my own regrets. Mm -hmm. The way I came to know that I needed to be saved um, mm -hmm. was that I was a sinner. I had problems. Mm -hmm. I got into a lot of stuff that I shouldn't have. I mean, everything is not gang banging and drugs. Yeah. Like right. I, got, I got into a lot of other sin <laughs> that was no right. good. You know? right. right. Yeah, I, I realized that I needed to, you know, to treat women better um, right. in my life and do do better and so and allow myself to be treated better i was you know i right. was in abusive relationships right where i wasn't treated good so right. you know so I'm you sorry for talking so much i'm the son of a preacher that's, <laughs> that's okay i listen i always say uh my show is about real people talking about real things to help real viewers that are watching so mm -hmm. You know, uh, we don't have to, we don't always have to be so um, fancy and sometimes we can go long if we have to. So it's okay. <laughs> um, you know, I, I had, um, I have an awesome yo yoga coach um, who also is, uh, she's um, known for like international RTT, th she's an RTP therapist. Mm -hmm. So she specializes in trauma, PTSD, anxiety, mm -hmm. depression, and even fertility. When I tell you she's off the chain, she's off the chain. Her name is Sat Satvir K K Kaur. I can never say her name. Mm -hmm. K-U-R. And she's in, in London now, but she does these wonderful um, Zoom sessions. I mean, she's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, and and I and I just for anybody who's out there and that may have anxiety, I want to just put 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 up. Uh, how do you say? What's the word? Promote her <laughs> um, her site because um, it's really good. Emotionalfreedomanywhere.com. Mm -hmm. E the F and the A are capitalized. Um, it's amazing. Yes. And when I tell you amazing, I mean so far 100% rate on at everybody who comes to her because she's mm -hmm. that good. And and uh, if you if you ever know anybody, you know, in your ministry, you come up to her, let me know. I'll I will definitely uh, refer them to her because she's that good. Mm -hmm. um, so I just had to share that. Mm -hmm. um, that's serious. And and most a lot of people, um, you know, they don't have the money for six hundred dollars a session for therapy. It's a lot. It's a lot. You, you got to come. Yeah, you got to come up or darn good insurance. You got to come up with all that stuff. So you I've been trying to find other modalities of healing um, so that you're not stuck one way and then be like, I, I don't have that. I don't have that insurance. I can't get mm -hmm. with that, that doctor. So there's always got to be a way. So anyway, so mm -hmm. your younger years, um, you well, you know, when you was doing music, what was your what was your first influence? Um, was it in the church, being a preacher's kid, and hearing the gospel choir, or what was your first influence when you, when you, you know, your younger years? What got you into music in general? My first influence, to be honest with you, was pain. It was mm. pain, you know what I'm saying? Because mm -hmm. everything wasn't perfect in our household when I was, when we were kids. You know, my father was transitioning from his old lifestyle. He struggled. Mm -hmm. He, what I like about him though, he was honest about it. Mm -hmm. you know what I'm but outside of the pain, um, the old gospel singers, right? Mm -hmm. Because they sang, but I could hear their pain and their experience with God. Mm -hmm. um, and 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 then you had people like I, you know, I ventured out and explored like people like Curtis Mayfield, mm -hmm. um, you know, Bobby Womack, uh, Marvin Gaye, um, the Doobie Brothers, oh, um, yes. the Eagles, people mm -hmm. like that, mm -hmm. and. Um, you know, I um, I use all of those, it, all all of that experience to kind of help me, propel me into the type of messenger I wanted to be. Because more than an artist, I I looked at myself as a messenger. When I got behind that microphone and when I sat down to write a song, mm -hmm. I was very aware that that I had a, a message to send. Mm -hmm. I was very driven, mm -hmm. even to the point where I think it used to irk some of my group members. <laughs> <laughs> well, Oh, we gonna write these bars. <laughs> yeah, I was kind of like, we got to do this because we got to get this message out there, and, and they were like, "Who are you talking to?" <laughs> <laughs> listen, that's, that's what I'm saying. Like, I yeah. think God can call you to do many things. 
Yeah. Uh, and the one is preach in the pulpit with the Bible and with the message of word. And mm-hmm. another one's word through song and word through rap. I mean, look at somebody like a, like a DMX. I mean, I mean, some, mm-hmm. some of his old albums like fire, you know what I'm saying? And it's yeah, still, I remember him. Yeah. still I him, but I remember his. Yeah. Work. Yeah, but I'm saying he has gospel songs. I'm like, I'm so, well, songs on there that could be. I'm like, mm, I don't know, but I think I'll go see God after that. You know, <laughs> so I'm just saying sometimes yeah. it, things are not conventional. Like not everybody's going to go, uh, uh, you know, like you go, you know, on Sundays we get up and then they say, anybody, uh, anybody feels the need to come up and whatever. And then they, you know, you could be, get, sort of, you get, not get baptized, but where they do the calling at the end. So that's the traditional way. Um, but then there's people, regular, plain old people who say things to people and make them think, and then they hear what God has to say. So yeah, the sorry, there's no one way, you know what I'm saying? And so you yeah. heard something mm-hmm. and knew something, but your heart um, that was important to you. Yeah. And God just, God just had to mold me um, into, um, into using it the right way. I mm-hmm. think when I was younger, if you ever hear any of my early work, it, it was it was very aggressive because I really I had to get something out of me, mm. but then God God um helped me and um you know he he just molded me the way I needed to be molded and my wife was was that buffer as well. Every man mm-hmm. ev- every man needs the help of a woman. You know right. what I'm saying? we might be born with gifts, but the, it's, it's the woman that helps us perfect that gift, and yeah. that's you can't run from that. You know what I'm saying? That's why. It bothers me when I hear the brothers in my generation when they talk about, you know, they going some, they went somewhere and got knowledge. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden they're smarter than their grandmothers and their mothers who prayed for them in the church. Mm-hmm. But I'm like, hold up, we ain't even been with through what they've been through. They right. was on their knees praying for us while we was in the streets mm-hmm. playing dancing with the devil. So how 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 good is our knowledge really? Mm. You know what I'm saying? So, but that's that's another show. <laughs> <laughs> I know that's right. Oh, hello. Yeah. Um, what, why did you decide um, to start a label when you did that time? Uh, and and I know it's a while ago, and that's uh, – do you still have the label? Oh, ESP Production, Emotional Studio Production? Yeah. No, no. When I when, when I left, when, mm-hmm. when I went into pursuit of gospel, mm-hmm. um, the parting was kind of rough because right. okay. they could – you know, my producer really couldn't understand what was happening. He had an idea, mm-hmm. but um, no, I parted with the label. Uh, mm-hmm. What made me start the label, though, is that – before I really got my foot in the door, mm-hmm. um, I used to work in promotion and printing. Like the company that I used to work for, SNS Graphics, used to do promotion for RZA, Little Kim. I right. mean, um, artwork for right. Bad Boys. And so I met a lot of people, mm-hmm. but I just saw too much, um, I guess, commercialization mm-hmm. where they were looking for a specific thing. I mm-hmm. wanted to be free, so it would encourage me and my producer to put the money together and become independent, mm-hmm. so that we could be free to send our message. And, and not be controlled. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's and uh to be in control is not a good feeling. Yes, absolutely. So well, that's good that you did that because a lot of people, especially back then, that's been a while. That's been a long while. So that you were kind of ahead of your time, I guess you want to say, uh, mm-hmm. saying I'm gonna take control and do this myself. Um, mm-hmm. you you were one of the artists that was on there and songwriters on that label too, right? Yeah, yeah. I was the lead songwriter, the co-producer, um, manager and promoter. <laughs> <laughs> sound like Puff Daddy. Oh, yeah. I wrote it. Song. No, who is it? Is it uh Tyler Perry and and a Puff? I oh, yeah, 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 yeah. He is the video, he is the video and he wrote. Yeah, the yeah. Video. Well, I, I wouldn't put myself on his level. I'm but joking. I'm joking. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, yeah no, I, I was the writer. Uh, Manded Verse, yeah. uh, aka Michael Pegues, was the lead producer, and he mm-hmm. wrote to incredibly gifted man. And then, then you had Hennessy Bugs. That was his really. <laughs> that was his name. He we actually signed him late. He mm-hmm. was on the last album. Mm. Yeah. Wow. Well, you, um, I don't know. I still think you have a musical bug in you. So I don't know what you're going to do with that, but I hopefully you'll do that gospel album. Um, mm-hmm. I, I see you did a lot of things. I see you even pursued boxing. Um, yeah. Your record was what, 52 and seven? Well, 52 and seven unofficially because I used to do underground boxing. Okay. And then, and then I became an amateur boxer. I fought in the gold. In the Rochelle with Rob Thomas and him? With that, that? Rob Garris. Yeah, I used to. Well, Rob Garris is where I did charity work. Okay. But I used to work to raise money. I mean, help raise money for mm-hmm. foster kids. Oh, like, hey. Woo-hoo. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I helped Rob with his documentary. I was, I was, I actually did an interview in his documentary. Oh. Um, I mean, he did it himself, but we, we actually fought. 
Mm-hmm. But I used to box for the Throwaway Kids Foundation. Nice. Yeah, nice. I, used to, I used to box. You've been out there doing it, I see. Yeah. Um, what was I gonna say? Um, so what else? Let me see. You oh, in 2002, you had a small part in the movie Harlem's Beauty, yeah. Yeah, I had a part in the movie Harlem's Beauty. Yep. I was in the comedy scene with the comedian, uh, Dean Edwards, yes, yeah. yeah. And you had a small role in the poetry nook, yeah. The poetry nook, it was a it was kind of like a gospel skit type stage play show, okay. That was, um, that was another acting gig mm-hmm. that, that I had, um. Uh, under the uh, direction of um, Ayanna Brown, she's the artist that she's the author that wrote the book The Other Woman. You should okay. check that out. That's a beautiful Other woman. I will check that woman. out for sure. Yeah, yeah. What else? Let me see. You um you had a role a uh, small thing in uh, movie movie Shadowlands in 2018 as a police officer. Yeah, Shadowlands. I played a police officer. It's uh Dennis Dennis Polanco um was the producer and, and the director um. And I actually connected with him through one of the actors, um, mm-hmm. Poetry Nook. Um, yeah, but I, I played a police officer mm-hmm. in, in, in that version of Shadowlands. I, there's actually an old version. It's a different movie, but it has the same title, Shadowlands in the 1980s. Mm-hmm. I think Fade on the way was it? I'm not sure. Yeah. Could have been, it could be, or Meryl Street, one of them. I don't know. <laughs> I'll check it out. But yeah, I, know I, do. I, I used to do, um, well, I was doing mostly extra work. I never had a great, great principal part, and I did a great mm-hmm. part. But um, but I'd be like, okay, just tell me where to stand. I'm good. <laughs> tell me yeah. where to stand when I'm in there, and I'm good. This yeah. is the good old days when you can you can do anything, and they paid you your your thing in an envelope and cash. Now you got to go and sign up and do all the stupid stuff. So. All the crazy stuff. Yeah, yeah. It's crazy. I, I still want to do music though. Um, yeah, look uh, up projects with me and Cat Fina. Yes, that's where I was going to. Uh, about okay. uh, I hope you start that group too, the gospel group. But uh, but what's your your upcoming project? Uh, with Kat Spina, um, who sings uh, Chasing Sa- Shadows, right? Yes. Is this the um, new one gospel oriented? Yes, it is. Awesome. awesome. Tell us about it. Well, I wrote a song called It's Okay to Cry. Mm. And that song is based on um, me knowing Kat Spina's story um, mm. and uh, n- uh, me knowing my own story of being um, told not to cry, being not allowed to not a, being allowed to experience your own pain or feel your own pain. Mm-hmm. But, you know, in the Bible, God never said it wasn't okay to cry. Mm-hmm. You know, Jesus wept. God never said it was. It, he just said, don't sit there. Right. You know, walk by faith. Right. You know what I'm saying? But so I wrote that song. And then um, there's another song I wrote um, for Cat Spina called um, In Time. Time. Yeah. So, um, but it, yeah, it's, 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 um, spiritually oriented you know what i mean and it's it's to encourage people it's not for entertainment it's actually for educational purposes and you know definitely to glorify god and help people okay all right so well what about um do you think that we can fit i i can't believe the time is going so fast do you think uh, a half an hour goes so quick it's it's amazing to me um do you well, that's because we don't have any commercials and, and most, <laughs> yeah. be, seriously real tv an hour show would be a half an hour mm-hmm. so a half an hour show is really well, half an hour show is a half an hour exactly because we don't have anything to fill it, but mm-hmm. that's good. Um, but um, but I wanted to ask uh, as we wrap it up soon, um, do you think we can fit all of our talents in uh, if we do what God tells us to do? I think so, because as long as we use it, <clears throat> as long as God uses it, when when you allow him to use it through you and let him take control of it, it's perfect. Like um, my father and I had to give the gab. Mm-hmm. But he, but God said, "I'm gonna use your ability to talk, mm-hmm. to glorify me, and preach the word of God, mm-hmm. not to not to kick the Willy Bobo on the corner." You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> or, right. in pool, or in the pool room, like we used to do. Right. But um, not together. But I'm just saying in our history. <laughs> but um, yeah. Um, you can use it when see when when people say, "Well, you can't be in the world or do this and be a Christian." They're mm-hmm. talking about when you're doing it on the devil's territory, so to speak, where it's for entertainment and exploitation of people. Right. And right. where you're doing things where the origin is, was never to glorify God. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. There are some things in this world that the origin of it was never to give God the glory. You know what I'm saying? We could think of a thousand things that would, that would take too long to even, <laughs> but yeah, I, I don't believe that God doesn't want you to have a life. It's just that when you, when, when we exploit ourselves, mm-hmm. we're hurting, we're hurting the end. I, I looked at, I, look, I just look at how 
men and women are treated in the industry. Like they empty themselves and die sad. Yeah. I don't think that's God's will. I don't think, you know what I'm saying? Like I have a lot of rough days preaching. Right. I do. Right. I've preached in the streets. I've preached in jail. And when I go into jails and preach, they lock you in the day room. There's no guard in there with you. Mm. And so I've had people in there that don't believe in God. Right. That of other religions challenge me, you know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, God gives me the victory. He's glorified. Right. So I don't go down sad. You know what I'm saying? The way right. the world exploits people. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right. So they'll take, like, I just look at how the world and the industry takes a woman's beauty. Right. Exploits it. Then when it's used up, they throw her to the side. That's cruel. That's the current music business. <laughs> I hate to say it. In mm -hmm. fact, that's definitely the music business. Uh, mm -hmm. you know, I tell any young lady entering, you better uh, major major in music business and management so you know mm -hmm. how to do your own, own game here. Mm -hmm. And be, don't be thinking that you're... Um, like you can be a Beyonce if you want to, but you better know how to do it yourself, uh, literally organically, because mm -hmm. if you don't, you have to go in and feed the beast. Mm -hmm. the beast is real. I worked a couple of record labels. I know the beast is very real. Yeah, uh, I, know you, I know your history in, in, in the business. So yeah. I know yep. you know what you're talking about. I yep. know definitely. You've probably seen stuff, know stuff. It's crazy. Yep. And, and, I, and I worked on the other side working in the club. So I, mm -hmm. I know a few sides <laughs> and as a model, you know, yeah. what I'm saying? back in the eighties, mm -hmm. uh, you, you can be um, Naomi Campbell or Beyonce, but you're going to pay to be them people. So it's okay. mm -hmm. I just feel like if it's something, if it's, I believe God gives us all talent. And if your mm -hmm. talent is singing or playing instruments in music or writing or whatever it is, that, that's fine. You can go to however high you want to go with it. Mm -hmm. As long as you still f true to what he said. So if he gave it to you as a gift, to spread a message, like let's say if I'm suffering, let's say if I suffer from depression, I'm making this up, mm -hmm. uh, and and, and I, some of the spirit guides me to write a song. Mm -hmm. That song was was given to me to help other people. Mm -hmm. you know it's mm -hmm. not really about me, but mm -hmm. so so if I follow that rather than I go into the label and they say, well, this song is good, but you got to take out the word God. This song is good, but you can't not that part. This song is good, but not that. Now and see what you did. You don't ruin the whole purpose of what the gift that he gave you. So I yeah. think follow, follow it. You will get more um, King and countries, uh, Kirk Franklin, Clark sisters, you know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? Yolanda Adams, mm -hmm. people that are talented, but still, still following their gift and helping people figure this out. Cause life is tough. Yeah. And I mean, you, you know what? I always tell people, God doesn't exploit you. Nope. You know what I'm saying? He makes you an instrument of his glory, which exactly. means you trying to, in order for, I like to shine through you. Mm -hmm. um, you can't be being abused or, right. or mistreated by God. Right. People may, but um, but God never exploits a human being. You know what okay. I'm saying? Like you pay for fame here. You know what I'm saying? You pay for it. And I've had people tell me, why don't you rap about the streets? Mm. Why don't you rap about, you know, females? How come you don't have no females on your album cover? Right. You know and I was like, um, because I don't want to exploit people. But um, when we do things God's way, even when we don't understand it, mm. you know, we are blessed. We yeah. are blessed. God's, yeah. standard, God's standard is necessary because there has, there has to be a difference. Anybody can blend in. Yes. You know what I'm saying? And that's the problem with a lot of people that saying that they love God, you know what mm. I'm saying, in, in music, in politics, everywhere, on TV. But your life has to go along with what you're saying. Like, even yeah. the album you heard at the time, and this is before I was in ministry, yeah. but when I was talking about uplifting people, I was a counselor at that time. I was working in human services. Yes. Um, and so my music was coming from a real place because I was working with addicts and broken families. Right. So I saw the pain I was writing about. Right. Well, well, um, I'm going to, um, I was going to take a couple of comments I was going to read. And then I had one last question for you. And I wanted to talk about your wife briefly, um, your mm -hmm. lovely wife. Um, mm -hmm. Just a quick uh, note to her because uh, she's fabulous. Um, so, so T Storm said, your gift should always be used, but do not forget to be pleasing unto God while you use it. I like that. Mm -hmm. Thank you. T. Thank you very much. And hi to everybody out there. We're just trying to get to a, a true few comments here. Betty, um, not Betty. Sorry, Betty. Hi, Betty. Uh, Emma says, "Be true to you." That's uh, that's a fact. Be true to you. Who else? Um, somebody had one more comment. Um, 
Oh, T has said, that goes to show you that you are a human being being created by God and you will experience things like the average human being. That's a fact. That's mm -hmm. a fact. Amen. Um, That's I think what that, people that, say. Yeah. Thank you guys for the comments. Emma says, now you're preaching. <laughs> thank you, Emma. Uh, yeah. No, thank you guys uh, for the comments. I appreciate you. Uh, be true to you is, is, the, is what, probably the most one of the most prevalent ones. Thank you, Emma. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, T. Um, so, so we're going to wrap it up real quick, but, uh, first thing I wanted to, to ask you is how did you, um, find someone even with your yoke, your lovely wife? Oh man, <laughs> this is an amazing story. I mean, I, I promise I'll make it brief because I know I talk a lot. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, well, many years ago when, when I was struggling, um, I had been in some abusive relationships where I was always getting a heartbroken or whatever. Um, I just prayed to God. I was like, God, please, you know, send me a wife. Just take control of my life and do what you want with it. You know, formulate it. So um, I prayed that prayer. Mm -hmm. I believed God at that time, but then I went and started doing my own thing again. But the God, the the amazing thing about God is when you pray, if it's in his will, he'll answer your prayer, even if you're not staying on that path. Mm -hmm. I was running around. Um, I was running around, you know, uh, chasing women. Mm -hmm. And one day I uh, walked, well, I came out of a building um, for, you know, visiting some people I know. And my wife is sitting outside. So years mm -hmm. ago, before I, before her and I got together, I used to always try to talk to her, mm -hmm. but she wasn't trying to hear it at the time. But I kid you not, mm -hmm. basically the message I got for, from her in short was that God spoke to her about me. Mm -hmm. So when I first heard her say that, I was like shocked like a little nervous, but then I was like, nah. Mm. And after a while, God sent her into my life. Like every time I was messing up, she was there mm. and she would help me get it together. And I was like, and for, for a minute, I was trying to dodge because I was still trying to do some things that right, wasn't right. Right, 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 right. And, and one day I was coming out of a place doing something I shouldn't have been doing and who's standing there? Her. No way. Really? So, yeah, so I went to my father who's you know, who was preaching at the time and I said, dad, I keep getting this feeling, right? I said, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm still running around kind of doing stuff. Mm -hmm. But Keyshawn is my wife. And I said, I keep getting this feeling that Keyshawn is my wife. Mm -hmm. and he said, well, I don't want to shock you. Mm -hmm. And then my mother said the same thing. Mm -hmm. He said, I don't want to shock you. Mm -hmm. But God spoke something. And a lot of times when you're in uh, an ordered body, like a, a church and a family, mm -hmm. God, will, God will speak to you, but then he'll confirm it through the head. Right. And which were my parents. Mm -hmm. And it was like, they already, I knew it, but I mm -hmm. think I was kind of running from it. Right, because right. I, always, I, I always had a bad habit of trying to solve my emotional pain and my issues with rejection right. through chasing through chasing women. Right. So if it didn't work with this one, it was, it was on to the next episode. Right, right. God was stopping that. Right. So it, the confirmation came through my family, through mm -hmm. stuff my wife was saying, because God was telling on me. <laughs> he told her. <laughs> God told her my issues. I was so embarrassed, <laughs> but he told her. <laughs> so that was another way I knew too. I was like, wait, only, only a woman of God that's supposed to be in my life could know that. Cause I would never tell nobody that. Right. She, right, right. I was like, Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> that was scary. That's awesome though. It's so awesome to meet somebody that's your, that's, e that's, e that you're even with and they get you, you know, mm -hmm. Makes it a little bit less uh, difficult for your work, especially. Yeah, she's in wonderful. She's wonderful. I know. I can imagine. I can totally mm -hmm. imagine. Uh, and and if, if God sent her, she has to be perfect, pretty much. Mm -hmm. You know. <laughs> so that's the best part. It's like you didn't even pick her. She picked. You God picked her. You know. So yeah, we know. Yeah. So well, before we go, um, what advice would you give to someone called uh, called by uh, called by God? Um, so young as yourself, what advice would you give to someone? Young as me, I well, I ain't as young as I once was. But, um, <laughs> really, you're not. You're younger than me. A lot younger than me. No, I'm in my forties. You're younger than me. I just said a lot younger than me. Oh, okay. I thought I was older than you. For no, <laughs> no, no. You, no. Look, you look, look younger. <laughs> yep, yeah. that's a good well, DNA. No, <laughs> well, the, the advice that I would give them is fall on your knees yes. and surrender. Yes. That's when all the turmoil is going to stop. The challenges is not. Mm, right. Because when you pick up the cross, right. believe me, the devil's coming to try to turn you back. He's oh, been trying okay. to turn me back ever since with temptation, with frustration. Mm -hmm. um, I tell people all the time, preachers go through it. I get tempted. 
Right. I, I have fallen. Right. I have. I've made huge mistakes, but I got a good wife that helps me redirect my focus. Like, Rich, come on, you you messing up. Right. But, but um, know that his plan is is inevitable right. in your life. You will only reach true fulfillment mm -hmm. when you answer his call. So my advice would be fall on your knees spiritually mm -hmm. and even physically mm -hmm. and answer him. Because uh, there's I nothing, no matter how tough things get, there's nothing like knowing. One thing God does when you answer his call, he cancels confusion. Mm. Like, I know, I know Ooh. for a fact. That's a sermon. Right. <laughs> I know for a fact, mm. right, I know for a fact that I'm supposed to be a minister. I know for a fact that I'm supposed to be in the field of human services, helping others. Because mm -hmm. um, I know, you actually, you said human resources in the beginning, but it's human services. I, oh, I said it so wrong. Yeah. I apologize. No, that's okay. I get tongue twisted. But, yeah, I, I just don't want people to assume and say, "Hey, you said you, you know." Absolutely. Thank but, you for the correction yeah, too. Yeah. No. No problem. But um, yeah, that's that would be my advice because um, he cancels all confusion. Like as you can see in my history, I boxed, yes. uh, acted. Uh, I was in. I was a rapper. Comedy. Right. Comedy. I did stand up comedy. Yes. But I know for a fact, uh -huh. God directed me to the field of human services, rebuilding people. Hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, God, when you answer God's call, He will cancel out confusion. Yes, you, you will know that you are. You, no matter how bad the pain gets, when you are called, He will cancel out confusion. Y'all heard it right here. Mm -hmm. uh, so, thank you so much, Elder yes, thank uh, you. Adams, Adams, Adamson. I appreciate you so. <laughs> much. I was just looking at something. Sorry, uh, yeah. I, I sidetracked it. You know, I got ADHD. Uh, but you know, I, I do too. <laughs> <laughs> we're both like, ah. Oh. I felt so bad because I was talking so much. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> it's all good. I was like, I hope I'm not irritating Tanya. <laughs> right, we'll have to talk another time about you doing comedy because I I never knew you did stand up. That must have been all the years I haven't seen you. Yeah, you yeah, yeah. In there. Stand up, yeah. Matter of fact, my producer's brother uh -huh. um, was friends with Capone. The, okay. The Capone. And they, they had a show they was doing up here in the Rochelle, and that's how I got in. Oh, wow. See, you are a man of many talents, but I thank you so much. Um, guys, you've been watching On the Town with Tanya. Uh, this is our guest, Elder Richard Addison II. So thank you so much for taking the time to come see us. Uh, let us know if that gospel album comes out uh, yeah. or a song or a single, however you do it, let us know. Um, yeah. We appreciate you for being on the show. Yes, thank you so okay. much. All yeah. right, guys. So guys, we will see you all uh, on Thursday for Tanya's Living Room Chat. Uh, and if anybody out there is suffering from anxiety, I, I got a great person for you that does awesome, awesome sessions. So just let me know. Inbox me. All right. Mm -hmm. Until mm -hmm. next week. Bye. Thank you. God bless you. All right. Bye. <laughs>